Thanksgiving's viewers. Well, at the time of this video, I hope you had a really great Thanksgiving if you are from the United States. And of course, for all the countries about to celebrate Christmas, as you know, shopping season has begun. So if you are looking for some gifts for somebody you know who is automotively inclined, uh, well, I can't really think of any good ideas. All right, let's see what we've got here. This is a really nice, clean looking 2017 Ford Escape. It has an EVAP code that the owner has spent over $1,000 trying to get fixed. So let's look at the background a little bit and we've got kind of an interesting history here. All right, so this all started with, uh, let me pull up the text here from the customer. This all started with a trip to O'Reilly's where they did the Vera scan, if you are not familiar. Uh, when you take the car to O'Reilly's and get the check engine light code scan, they pull, oh wait, let me make sure there's no customer data on here. Okay, there isn't. Uh, we can see there is a P1450 code, which I've honestly never heard of before, uh, but it doesn't matter because it says unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum, so we can easily tell what's going on there. See right up there, it says uh, replace the purge solenoid. Despite the fact that there are many variables that you could have here, you could have a, a, any kind of blockage in the system would do this. Blocked vent valve, uh, you could have a blocked EVAP canister, um, fuel in the system from filling up and spilling fuel in there. You could have a faulty pressure sensor that's just stuck in a vacuum reading, no matter what all the time, the system thinks it can't bleed up vacuum. There's all kinds of variables, but anyway, this is what the thing said. So the owner replaced the purge valve himself and that did not fix the issue. So then he ended up taking it to a automotive shop, a really well-known popular chain, a nationwide chain, uh, that um, I won't mention the name of it, but uh, it, it sounds like a couple of very religious siblings and I get, I get a lot of cars uh, from them, honestly. And uh, they, let's see, I, at first I didn't believe this, but the owner says they replaced a high pressure fuel pump. That's what he said, yep. So um, they, uh, they at first replaced some type of, the owner said it was some type of fuel line that cost a couple hundred bucks. I'm guessing maybe an EVAP line, maybe they, they found a blockage, uh, I guess I'm thinking not but uh, they replaced some type of a fuel line. That didn't fix it, they came back. Uh, they said that it was a high pressure fuel pump. It actually, it actually says high pressure fuel pump replaced. I, I don't even, ah, God, I don't even know what to say about that. All right, so they replaced the high pressure fuel pump. Of course that doesn't fix it. And then they said uh, that it's the result of them overfilling the gas tank or something. How they would, how they would know that is a variable, but replace a high pressure fuel. I, 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 I'm speechless about that. But to be honest, I've had a lot of cars from these guys. I, I uh, call them oxygen sensor brothers myself because any time, ever, that I have followed up a car that went there first. If the check engine light made any mention whatsoever of oxygen sensors, you could bet on it the oxygen sensors were replaced before I got the car. As a matter of fact, just a month ago, I had a car, it had air fuel sensors. Uh, at a cost of $1,200, they replaced both air fuel sensors, both rear oxygen sensors, didn't fix the car. It turned out it was just a dirty mass airflow sensor. I, I fixed it right in front of the customer in five minutes. Um, Wow. So anyway, the uh, customer got a raw deal here for sure, but uh, frustrated, they actually went back to the O'Reilly's see if they would recommend somebody and they referred to me. So that's where we're at with this. I think what we're going to do is go ahead and put scan tool up on here and just verify that we've only got that 1450 code. And then we'll see what we can do to uh, diagnose this. Now I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the operation of the EVAP system for this video. If you are not, you will wanna go back to my video, Diagnosis and Understanding of EVAP Systems before watching this, so it will make more sense. In that video, I talk about all the components of the EVAP system, how they work, how to diagnose it, that's what we're gonna do. 
But based on this um, very clear issue here, the, uh, this system is going to use vacuum system for the VAP. And what's happening is when it's trying to bleed off that vacuum, it cannot bleed off the vacuum. So most likely we've got some type of clog in the system because the purge solenoid was replaced. Another variable would be the purge solenoid is not sealing. And so we're always drawing vacuum when the engine is running at all times when we shouldn't. That would be a variable. A bad pressure sensor would be a variable as well. I think we already mentioned that. And um, yeah, some type of blockage in the system where, where I'm kind of thinking we're probably going to end up having to go underneath the car here, but I'd like to diagnose this uh, hopefully without even having to open the hood. So let's see what we can do. We can see we only have one fault code. It's the same exact thing. 1450, unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum. So let's see what we've got available as far as some bi-directional controls. So I don't have to do everything manually. We used to do that back in the day, but now with um, the inexpensive bi-directional scan tools, there's, there's no reason for me to open the hood on this car and diagnose this anymore. So uh, let's go to active test. And this is going to take a second to load. Okay, we'll come back in a minute. All right, let's see what we've got available to us. Okay, so we've got uh, our EVAP vent valve. We may try that, see if the vent valve is stuck closed or something. Uh, we've also got our purge valve, of course, here. We can control duty. So, oh, wait, there's a blocking valve too. Okay, blocking valve. Well, I didn't mean to push that, but we're gonna do that anyway. Actually, let me back out because blocking valve is gonna be new to you guys. Okay, so um, I have to go forward with it anyway. I'm just gonna hit open. Let's listen and closed. Okay, I can hear it opening and closing in the back of the vehicle. Uh, now, of course, we know from many videos that does not mean that it's functioning just because we hear the solenoid click. Yeah, I can totally hear it click. But many of you guys are like, well, wait a minute, what, what's a blocking valve uh, as opposed to the vent valve? So this is a, a new thing and actually it's very timely. Just yesterday, I had a viewer ask a really good question after watching the diagnosis and understanding of EVAP systems. And he asked, what is to prevent the charcoal canister from eventually just saturating with fumes and defeating the purpose of the EVAP system as the excess fumes would just go out to the atmosphere, right? And a really good question. So I gave him a couple of answers to that, but not this one. Uh, one of them is that you can hold up to 25 grams of hydrocarbons in a uh, EVAP system. And that is a lot. It would take a while before you would saturate a system, especially with a mostly closed system to begin with, with minimal evaporation, and if you're driving the car regularly. But what this is, is the blocking valve is like a vent valve, except that it's used to isolate just the fuel tank uh, as opposed to the rest of the system. And the idea with this, that some newer cars you will see this on, is as opposed to the vent valve, which blocks after the charcoal canister, the blocking valve will block prior to the charcoal canister. And essentially you isolate between your purge valve and fuel tank. The idea with that is it prevents exactly what that viewer was asking. And it prevents there just being constant flow to that vent valve and minimizes the evaporation. Once the pressure builds up to a certain point in the fuel tank, the blocking valve will open and it will vent those fumes off to the charcoal canister. So a blocking valve that is shut closed all the time or impeded, uh, that would also cause our issue where we would uh, essentially have the same thing as a closed vent valve. Uh, let's see, we've also got our purge valve duty cycle. I uh, want to probably start with that and see what kind of control I can have. And if the vacuum is trapped in there, then we know that we've got a blockage in the system, right? So we've got all this data here. Oh my God, there is a lot here. Really, all I need, honestly, is fuel tank pressure. I, I really don't need anything else. So uh, here's some EVAP stuff here. Okay, um, I'm going to choose this because I want to make sure that blocking valve is open. It should default open just like the vent valve. 
let's see, my blocking valve percent, I think will be an easier way to look at that. What else do we got here? Uh, let's see, EVAP duty cycle, that's gonna be default with the parameter that I've selected for my bidirectional control. Vent valve percent, I need that again. Vent valve should be open by default. We wanna make sure that it is for our test here. And then I need a fuel there. No, this is fuel rail pressure. Fuel rail pressure should be very good because they got a new fuel pump. So I need, there it is, uh, fuel tank pressure kilopascals. I don't really <laughs> use kilopascals much. The uh, voltage might be, oh, displayed as inches of water. That I can relate to. That's really all I need. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose those. Okay, so we can see we've got a 0% on the vent and blocking valve. That's good. Purge valve as well because engine's not running. And we've got a uh, 0.2 inches of water, which would be pretty much atmospheric. So that is good. Let's get this car started. And, oh, wow, well, we've got a problem. Okay, well, we are done. How easy was that? <laughs> this car has a bad purge solenoid. There's no other possible way you can get vacuum into the system other than through the purge solenoid. Looks to me, because of the variance we're getting here, that we probably do have the vent and, uh, well, we're building up vacuum a lot here now. Um, so now what I wanna do, okay, well, we know for sure, 100%, this purge valve is dead. Now that's kind of problematic because the owner replaced it, but I don't care, this purge valve is bad. It's bad out of the box, or maybe he replaced uh, something he thought was purge solenoid i'll have to call them and find out something about that uh let's see let's see if we increase our purge solenoid no difference whatsoever none whatsoever let's turn that off that purge valve is leaking bad okay so purge valve is a diagnosis on this car this is this is going to be our problem what i need to do though is verify that we don't also have some type of issue or blockage with the system downstream of this. Okay, so we're gonna go over to this vent valve now. And let's see, all I need is fuel tank pressure here. Where was that? There, right there, okay. All right, so we can see our vent valve is off. We can turn that on. We see we dramatically increase vacuum there. Turn that off, it should, oh no, the test aborted. Okay, well, now we can see that, that vent valve definitely works. Okay, so that answers that. Let's go to our blocking valve. The car didn't like that very much. It's running a little bit rough because it's running rich now because we've uh, sealed that vent valve off. Uh, where was my fuel tank pressure right there? Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got a, a problem. I can't really do the blocking valve test because my vent valve is stuck closed, so it's not gonna make a difference. I can close it. Yeah, we see it's not gonna make a difference because my, I, I heard it click too, by the way. Okay, the other thing too is we know for sure just by the nature of the code. Remember, think about what the code is telling us. Unable to bleed up vacuum. We do not have a leak in this blocking valve. And we saw earlier that the, the valve was clearly opened before I closed the vent valve. So we're done, we don't need to check this. This valve works fine. The only issue with this car is a bad purge solenoid. We're done. We didn't even have to open the hood or go under the car or anything. How about that? Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and find this purge solenoid in this car and let's fix this car. Okay, purge solenoid is right here under the air snorkel. Looks like we got a couple of quick disconnects here. One right there. Okay, there it is and our electrical connector. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, purge solenoid. <laughs> Blow right through it without any issue at all supposedly brand new purge solenoid That's a... 
and now it works. <laughs> okay, so um, faulty pintle in the purge solenoid. Obviously, I don't trust putting this back into the vehicle. We're going to replace this. But um, yeah, just tapped it on the, oh my God. <laughs> it broke. I just, I literally just tapped it on the wood table and now it broke. And, and now the, well, now we definitely have to replace it. Oh my God, I barely tapped this and it just came right apart. That's, that's just unbelievable. Uh, the owner said he got this thing off of like Amazon or something because O'Reilly didn't have the part. So, all right, well, now we definitely have to uh, get a purge solenoid. Let's go see what we can find. Okay, my friends at O'Reilly said they can come through, but they can't get the purge solenoid until tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I will pick up the new purge solenoid and then we will continue this and see that we fix the car for sure. Uh, this looks like it could be a long day here, but uh, this is what O'Reilly's surprised me with this morning as opposed to just my purge solenoid. There's my other piece to that over here. So as you can see, the uh, purge solenoid I removed that is defective has two quick connect fittings on it. Uh, this only has one quick connect fitting on it here, and then you replace the rest of the system here with all these hoses. This was a um, little over a hundred bucks here. And uh, the problem is, is that the connector doesn't fit. So this is the wrong thing, but this is the only way I've been able to find this. I'm not quite sure uh, how this guy got this component. If he did, maybe he replaced a whole thing with what he found on Amazon that had quick connects, but I'm definitely not gonna buy that again because this solenoid failed so quickly. So I gotta do a little more research here and try to find the right part, so we'll be back. <laughs> this is why you wanna have a good relationship with your parts guys. So as usual, my friends at O'Reilly's came through for me. They were able to find me the valve alone without the whole hose system and everything like that that I really don't need, $25. $25 to fix this car after over $1,000. Turns out the owner was correct. Uh, in, while it was still a guess, uh, it was correct replacing the solenoid and uh, I'm assuming he replaced the whole fuel line system and everything with it as well. And that was the correct call. Unfortunately, he didn't realize he got a bad part from Amazon. Uh, then <laughs> took it over to that place that uh, Wow, that just went south from there. Customer had it right the whole time. All it needed was the purge solenoid. Can't blow through it. So let's plug this thing in and then we just need to verify the repair and we are done for $25. All right, let's try this again with our new solenoid. All right, I'm gonna go to control unit, PCM. First thing I wanna do, we're gonna go ahead and just clear this code because I know it's not gonna come back. All right, and oh, check it out. Look what we did here. We created a new uh, rich code here. Hey, look, an oxygen sensor. If they took this over to that shop, they would replace the oxygen sensor, wouldn't they? But we see we got a uh, rich bias on the oxygen sensor code. The reason for this is because, of course, when I closed that vent solenoid all the way and we sealed the system, we made the car go very rich uh, because we uh, created a vacuum in that system completely and it basically was just sucking up fuel vapors like crazy then driving the system rich. So again, just all the more evidence, we really only have one issue here. We're going to go ahead and erase those codes, but we caused that rich code uh, in our testing there. All right, now when I start the car up, we should have that check engine light off. And let's go, all we need to do now is go to our active test. I'm gonna go ahead and start the car right now, actually. All right, check engine light is off now. Oh yeah, this takes a minute. Okay, we'll come back in a minute here. All right, we want our purge valve duty. And we just need 
do a couple things here. First of all, need fuel tank pressure. Oops, I think I passed it. Fuel tank pressure right there is all we need. Let's take a look. All right, and right there, we are at atmospheric now. We've got our 0% purge valve. So now when I increase, we should start seeing some effect here. And you see we do. Let's get up to like a 50, 60% or so. You see we increase our vacuum. We're not moving up to 16 or so inches of water because again, we know that we don't have blockage in the system after all. Vent solenoid is working. And we can zero back down, get back to atmospheric. We see we now have proper bleed up. Now, what I wonder if I can do, let's set this at like a 50% duty cycle here. And then I wonder if I escape out of this, can we maintain? Yeah, we can, we can maintain it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my vent valve here. And so we are able to do, I believe, two systems at once here. Where's my fuel pressure in the tank there? Okay, turn that on, see that that jumps up. And it does, okay, I am satisfied. Uh, the other thing too, the blocking valve. So the blocking valve isn't even gonna be used during this application. The fact that we got that code, a blocking valve is not used with engine running in this application. Let's see what we can do. As far as testing that, just to get some peace of mind. Okay, we close our valve there and we should see that we are increasing our vacuum here. So that's all fine and dandy. All right, very good. Let's uh, just go back to our purge valve right here. So now when I check my data on the purge valve, it should go back down to atmospheric. So let's get our fuel pressure. This is all overkill. We know the car is fixed. When I turn this off all the way, we should return right about 0.2. And we do. Okay, I am happy. EVAP system on this car works. This is a fix. All right, well, I believe that's how it's done, but I'm gonna say that those guys are never going back to that shop again, and I'm sure I've picked up a new customer here. So just gonna be outright forthright and honest with these guys. I will give them a link to this video. They will see that I fixed this car basically with um, over two days trying to find the stupid part, but really like half an hour and $25 part Personally, me, I'll be happy with a hundred bucks, but I got the video out of it, which to me is way more important as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday season, I'm just gonna tell them they don't owe me anything and uh, it'll just make them even stew a little more about having to pay a thousand dollars for this. But, uh, and the guy made the right call in the beginning too. He just got a bum part out of the box. Always makes it difficult because you're, you're thinking, well, it's not the purge solenoid that was replaced but you, you can't rule out any variables as we see. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. We will see you next time.